Well, let's speak now to Andrew Fisher, columnist for The Eye, former executive director of policy for the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn. Great to have you here. Great to be here. It, do you agree with the analysis then that it's, there has been a series of elephant traps set for Keir Starmer as this conference approaches? Uh, only if you walk into them. I think if you're bold and you know what you stand for, nothing in politics is an elephant trap, really. And so on HS2, I think Labour is, has got a policy document going to the conference saying we fully back HS2 in full, which I assume to mean the original plan all the way to Scotland, actually, um, and the HS3 spur. Um, and... Uh, that should be the position, I think, still. You know, it's Labour's committed a hell of a lot of money, 28 billion a year. This is a one-off 36 billion pound cut that's actually being reinvested elsewhere. So there's no problem, really, for Labour financially. They've said they're going to make this money. They may as well um, kind of give some demonstrable ways of spending this because HS2 is a really valuable scheme. It will cut emissions. It um, reduces journey times. It's clearly going to create jobs and growth and help, you know, spur growth in, in the north rather than, you know, always investing in the overheating London and the South East. So it's a really beneficial scheme. It's interesting you mentioned the 28 billion. Um, that's mm. the Green Prosperity Plan, mm. the money that Labour's committed mm. to kind of green policies. I mean, is there an argument that HS2 could be repackaged as part of that? I think it could be. I think it should be, because if you look at what's happened in other countries, you know, where you've got um, high-speed rail, in fact, if you look at Spain and France, they've had high-speed rail networks for decades in some cases. You know, this is basic infrastructure in most of the rest of the world, and we're arguing over a one 210-mile line. It's they're fairly gonna, pathetic. They're, they're going to scrap the second leg, then, won't they, Labour? But, uh, I hope not. Way, right? I really hope not. I mean, there's clearly an, uh, this kind of act of political vandalism that Rishi Sunak announced yesterday of selling off the land that's been bought. They've spent half a billion pounds buying land between Birmingham and Crewe for that second phase, 2B of HS2, and then they seem to be getting rid of that and saying they're going to sell off the land. Clearly, if that's happened by the time Labour get in, that does make it very difficult, but I think we have to try and find ways to obstruct that as much as possible between now and the next election. Keir Starmer came up an awful lot at Conservative Party conference, woke Keir Starmer, the man of the meat tax. Um, <laughs> what, um, what does he have to do to, I guess, take himself away from the caricature yeah. the Conservative Party tried to paint of him and give us, you know, an election winning Keir Starmer? I think he has to focus on the key issues for the people. I mean, he should ridicule all the stuff about meat taxes, as, as you did very effectively with Claire Coutinho last week. Um, it's laughable and it shows how desperate the Conservatives are. He needs to focus on the cost of living crisis, on public services, you know, the massive waiting lists in the NHS, the underfunding of schools, crumbling schools and so on. Those core issues for people and, and uh, you know, the NHS, the inability to get a GP appointment, all those sort of basic day-to-day -day things that people are worried about, not the nonsense that was being spouted by Mark Harper and Suella Braven, their kind of conspiracy theorist nonsense. Ridicule that, concentrate on what matters to normal people. The thing that I was picking up quite a lot from Conservative MPs who, let's be honest, are pretty gloomy about the state mm. of polls, you know, they're door knocking, they're, they're, they're getting lots of grumpy voters, mm. is that they feel that Keir Starmer hasn't convinced the public yet. Mm. Do you think they're right in that? Yeah, I've been speaking to people who have been canvassing up in the by-election in Scotland, the Rutherglen and Hamilton West by-election. We can't talk too much about that, No, of course Sorry. Not. But if I, if I think of other by-elections <laughs> that have happened recently we as well, um, <laughs> then actually the same thing happens both sides of the border. People aren't particularly inspired by Labour, but actually north and south of the border, mm. there is this kind of um, antipathy, actually, growing antipathy towards the governing party in, in the UK and in Scotland. And I think that is um, benefiting Labour. So, in a sense... He doesn't have to inspire people. He doesn't have to be brilliant at the moment. He's getting by just by not being the other person. And that, that may well be good enough to win the election. 